Known for his incredible power and ferocious fighting instincts, by the time the Hawk had hung up his gloves in 1998, he had amassed an impressive 55 wins from 61 bouts, with a staggering 49 wins coming by way of knockout, firmly earning his place as one of the most devastating punchers in boxing history. There is no better display of the KO King's ferocious one-punch power being put to use than the chilling right hook he landed on slick southpaw Harold Graham. Down on all three scorecards and suffering from facial injuries of his own, Jackson abruptly wiped out the slickster in frightening but fashion. Falling ever further behind him. Oh no! That's what we were worried about! He won't get up from that! Earning three world titles in two weight categories across his 17-year career, the Hawks' devastating knockouts came from his pinpoint precision and incredible ability to time his opponents, usually rendering them unconscious before they hit the canvas. After almost 25 years since his last professional bout, we take a look back at the destructive power of Julian the Hawk Jackson. Sharing the bill with Mexican superstar Julio Cesar Chavez on a Don King promotion, Jackson faced off against Korean foe In Chul Beck for the vacant WBA super welterweight title. In a usual display of formidable power, the Hawk wasted little time flooring the Korean with a crunching left hand in the first. Landing at will with devastating effect, Jackson smashed his opponent down again in the third with a blistering combination, followed up with a lethal left hook. Somehow managing to get back to his feet, Inshul Beck was stopped merely moments later, as Jackson ended matters with a final barrage of bombs, forcing referee Mills Lane to intervene and call a halt to the dismantling. It was a brutal display of Jackson's ferocious power and fight-ending capabilities, destroying his foe inside just three rounds, earning the WBA super welterweight belt in the process. Eight months after his spectacular world title win in Vegas, Jackson was back to topping bills on another Don King promotion, this time in Atlantic City against tough contender Buster Drayton. Experienced and unorthodox, Drayton had faced the higher caliber of opponents of the pair, but Jackson's prolific power advantage would prove to be the deciding factor. There, you see, you see, there goes a right hand. Drayton down. Flash knockdown. Back to his feet with a smirk on his face, Drayton tried to outbrawl and trade up close with the champion, allowing Jackson to time the tough challenger with a perfectly placed left hook, freezing him on his feet before hitting the canvas like a falling tree. And Drayton is still firing back. Oh, a he big left hand. Oh, a tremendous left, left hand. Hooked him. Drayton right dropped on like the a button. tree. Drayton dropped like a tree. The final punch was breathtaking, adding another spectacular finish to his growing collection of chilling one-punch knockouts. Fighting lower down on the undercard at Mike Tyson's blockbuster showdown with British banger Frank Bruno, the Hawk made his next defense against Brazilian brawler Francisco Jesus. Firing on all cylinders from the starting belt, Jackson immediately set about the Brazilian, unleashing blistering combinations to head and body planting the challenger on the seat of his pants in the second stanza. Showing incredible toughness and bravery to remain in the bout, Francisco managed to survive the onslaught up until the eighth round, when an equilibrium scrambling right hand melted the Brazilian to the canvas in an instant. Clearly hurt and unable to make the count, referee Mills Lane waved off the contest. It was another spectacular display of Jackson's mesmerizing power. 
The Hawks' next defense of his super welterweight title came in the form of 22-year-old up-and-comer Terrible Terry Norris. The six-year younger challenger started the bout exceptionally, startling Jackson with quick-fire combinations, stunning the champion early in the first. Good chopping right hand, and Terry Norris right here in the opening seconds has taken all the play away from the champion. I think Julian Jackson's having a lot of trouble with the speed. Well, Julian Jackson took a right right on the ear from Terry Norris. And right now, the champion looking a little perplexed. His success was short-lived, however, as overconfident Norris found himself trapped against the ropes, allowing big-hitting Jackson to land his signature right hand, sending him down face first. Ratio of Jackson. Whoa! for one critical moment and caught a right hand from the champion. Terry Norris struggles to get up. He beat the count, but he's, he said he's all right, but Joe Cortez doesn't believe him. That's it. Jackson's incredible timing was clear to see on the slow motion replays, showing Norris lowering his left glove for merely a fraction of a second before Jackson uncorked his remarkable right hand with surgical-like precision, rendering the up-and-comer frozen on his feet. Did you have any doubt that you would be able to catch him with that kind oh, of shot? Oh, definitely. When I went back in, the, in, in my corner, I knew he was right there for the shot. I just had to set it up, Julian. time his movement, and set it up. Planning to move up a weight class to the middleweight division, Jackson took a tune-up fight against Wayne Powell on the undercard of Mike Tyson's clash against Henry Tillman. In another frightening display of chilling one-punch knockout power, Jackson landed a punch-of-the-year candidate flush on the chin of Powell midway through the fourth round, ending matters in truly devastating fashion. The right hand was earth-shattering, completely separating Powell from his senses as he lay stricken on the canvas requiring immediate medical attention. After his monumental decimation of top contender Wayne Powell, Jackson had earned himself a shot at the vacant WBC middleweight title against shifty southpaw Harold Graham. Known for his awkward, slick skills and incredible defense, Graham was troubling the Hawk through the first four rounds, forcing busted up Jackson to swing wildly, failing to land anything of significance. In total control and seemingly taming the power-punching monster without issue, the bomber attempted to land two consecutive left hands, allowing Jackson to time the slickster and return fire with fight-ending intentions. But falling ever further behind him. Oh no! That's what we were worried about! He won't get up from that. He's at a right hand. It's all over. He's at. Oh, would you believe it? Unbelievable. Would you believe it? The knockout was magnificent, yet concerning at the same time, instantly dismantling Graham to the canvas unconscious. Three months after suffering defeat at the hands of feared power puncher Gerald McClellan, Jackson opted for a tune-up fight against Carlton Haywood on a Felix Trinidad undercard in Puerto Rico. Choosing to box behind a tight high guard, Haywood was able to absorb the oncoming attacks for the first two minutes before a sense scrambling left hook sent him stumbling and unable to protect himself, prompting referee Luis Pebon to intervene and save the staggering boxer from any further punishment. <laughs> The fight ending sequence seen on the slow motion replay was another clear indicator of the destructive power Jackson had at his disposal. After failing to overcome big hitting title holder Gerald McClellan in the rematch the year prior, the Hawk got another crack at the vacant WBC middleweight title, this time against Italian southpaw Agostino Cardamone. Unbeaten Cardamone got off to a flying start troubling Jackson with his snappy jab and slippery defense in the first round, rocking the fight favorite with a check hook to the temple. The Italian's success was short-lived, however, as big-hitting Jackson finished matters in the second with a crushing right hand to the jaw. He hasn't got that old Julian Jackson swarming style right now. Jackson being cautioned for the moment by Marty Dankin for hitting behind the head. Cardamone made the count, 
but referee Marty Dankin deemed him unfit to continue and terminated the contest. Wobbly, and it's all over. It is all over. Julian Jackson, who looked to be in trouble in the first round, wins it in the second. Well, the Hawk is back. There's no two ways about it. Just what we were saying. He can't pull the trigger. He finally pulled the trigger and only took one punch.